Only this percentage of people who watch are subscribed. So subscribe now and never miss out. Enjoy the video. You guys aren't going to believe this, but we got more mail. And we're going to open it. This is from David in Massachusetts. Dear Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong, Behold, I give you the worst ceratopsid feat in dinosaur toy history. Am I right or wrong? Either way, I look forward to hearing your opinion on the matter. Best, David. Well. The, those are indeed some very bad ceratopsid feet. They are... They're, they are not actually ceratopsid feet. They're like theropod feet. Except they also put them on the front feet. You can almost forgive having feet like that on the back. Like, it's the wrong number of toes, but like, I, I, I get it. And it's not really proportioned to the way that a ceratopsid's foot would be. But on the front, guys... What's weird, it, like, the rest of it is odd, but it's it's not a terrible triceratops. We've obviously seen worse. Oh, they actually had the... Their, their jaw didn't hinge where this one hinges, but considering the feet, I'll forgive that. <laughs> yeah, thank you, David. This is from Dinofan in Illinois. Well, I hope they are. Ah, oh, they put our, our logo on the envelope. I don't think I could draw our logo from memory. We've got a couple of very small items and some correspondence. Dear Stephen and Liz, I am Julian. I am Julian in sixth grade in Illinois. I have recently found your channel and started bragging about what I learned. Enclosed is a few pages from a formerly known packet, a baby Jurassic World Triceratops and a baby dromaeosaur looking thing. Yeah, I could see that being a dromaeosaur. I think it's a Lego thing? Like it's got the little hole in the bottom where you would expect a Lego brick to fit. The place I got the former packet had an inaccurate Spinosaurus seeming to have a broken dentary bone. The dentary was literally just hanging there. Please keep an of these gifts, and if this package is shown in your next fan mail episode, please tell me what you think of the dromaeosaur. Best wishes, Julian. Well, I think it's so dinky. They they put effort into like they they gave it slit pupils and. They did try to, like, give it snatchy-looking hands, but I noticed they even went to the trouble of having them pronated like the Jurassic Park raptors would have. They managed to get a lot wrong in such a tiny package. Also doesn't have any feathers. Uh, P.S. Sorry for the atrocious handwriting. I'm not the best with handwriting. Oh, that's okay. The former packet is apparently coloring book pages? I don't see what you mean by broken dentary. Like... If, uh, unless he meant that there was a different Spinosaurus with a broken dentary. This one, like, it's cartoony, but it looks like it's all, all the parts are there. Yeah, thank you, Julian. Next, we have kind of a heavy one from R. 
in, what's DE? Delaware? Huh. We have a whole bunch of toys in here. Dear your dinosaurs are wrong, my name is Socrates, and I'm from Greece. Oh! I recently found these dinosaur toys on a shelf at home, I hadn't re and I hadn't really used them for years, so I decided to send them to your dinosaur collection. The toys are a really skinny T-Rex. Okay, I'm gonna pull them out and then we'll read what they are. <laughs> ah! Oh, that one doesn't want to... Oh, oh. Is there only one sculpt of Apostegwia, or however you say that, that everybody copies? Oh, hey, that looks a lot like our Marcus Howard. Okay. Um, a really skinny T-Rex, which I assume is this one, which is, I think, trying to imitate either the Jurassic Park T-Rex or, like, the old Papo T-Rex. A Triceratops, a Styracosaurus. That's this guy. And this guy here. A Polycanthus, question mark? I'm guessing that's this guy? Doesn't have a label on it, but that could be a Polycanthus. A Kentrosaurus. Oh, with real... huh. I've never seen a Kentrosaurus with such strongly hooked shoulder spikes. That's kind of odd. Kind of a weird pose for a Stegosaur, too, having its head curled around like that. You don't usually see that. It's like it's plotting. Uh, a Stegosaurus, an Allosaurus, a Cryolophosaurus. Cryolophosaurus, I think we got one of these, like, almost identical last time. Yeah, there it is. In fact, this might be a knockoff. Here's the one we got last time. One is clearly, uh, an inferior casting or an inferior mold. Or maybe it's just worn. A Brachiosaurus giraffe or giraffe titan. I think this is a giraffe titan. Just looking at the head, which is wrong anyway. But like that's that's the shape that I would associate with what is now giraffe titan. A G a Gigantoraptor. It's got to be this guy, right? Unless I misidentified the Allosaurus earlier, but I assume this is Gigantoraptor. Wait. Yeah, there's some here that he didn't list. So by process of elimination, like this is a Therizinosaur of some kind. Maybe, could this be a Gigantoraptor? It's a, I think it's an Ornithomimosaur, and I love its pose. <laughs> That's not, the arms don't twist, it's just posed like that, just <laughs> What's that really big Oviraptor? It might be called G Gigantoraptor, Steven. People are going to be very unkind in the comments. They're going to be like, I can't believe you thought the Dilophosaurus was a Gigantoraptor and thought the Gigantoraptor was a Oviraptor. Margosaurus is now outdated, or at least the, the separated 
keratin-covered horns is not the favored interpretation right now. But they at least have the single horn to start off with. That's cool. They bothered to. And I still don't remember what these are called. I want to... Cr it starts with an A. We got one last time. I guess I took it off the shelves. Oh no, there it is. Augustinia. I knew I was close. Augustinia. Yeah, these are really similar looking. I wonder if one is a copy of the other. Or they're both working from the same thing. Although this one has a slightly lower effort tail. <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you, Socrates. I don't know how to feel about the fact that there are still people in Greece named Socrates. I feel like that's... I don't know, it would be like meeting someone in the United States called Abraham. Like, I'm sure they exist, but you don't hear about it anymore. Up next, we have... from Nicole in New Jersey. There's a, a case full of something and some correspondence. Your dinosaurs are wrong. I found this tin set at Target and thought you might enjoy receiving one to take a look at. You can keep this one. Thank you for making a series with a great concept and beautiful delivery. Keep up the great work, Nicole. Well, thank you. It's a... Oh, they're educational magnets. There we go. Okay, so you're... I guess you punch them out? And they stick to the... Yeah! Neat. Is there a reason that, like, it seems like every depiction of Barasaurus, it's always rearing. Is it because there's a famous mount of Barasaurus that is rearing, or is that just one of those tropes that nobody knows where it came from? Oh, here we have quadrupedal Platyosaurus. Oh, sorry. Hey, feathered Manoraptoriforms! Oviraptor and Gobi Venator. I don't know what a drom Dromaceomimus. I've never heard of a Dromaceomimus. You throwing me curveballs, magnet set. It's got a little information. It's from Canada. Huh. Close relative of Struthiomimus. Okay. Neat. Next, let's grab this. This is... Oh, from Ariel in Israel. There we go. Got some kind of pachycephalosaur, some kind of uh, saurolophane, and a, what I think is a tyrannosaurus. It's got kind of a odd construction to it. Oh. Dear Stephen and Liz, my name is Ariel and I'm 23 years old from Israel. I discovered your show a few years ago when my long-lasting dino obsession from childhood evolved and blossomed into a genuine interest in paleontology. Always good to hear. It is a brilliant concept that I never get tired of, though my only suggestion is keep 
picking the less accurate toys as they are way funnier to watch. Fair. My favorite dinosaur is Therizinosaurus, which you've already covered, so I'm sending in some toys that I believe you don't have. A Tsintosaurus. Yeah, okay. Uh, a sole survivor from my massive childhood toy box, as well as the Stigimoloch, question mark? Oh, I guess it could be. And Albertosaurus, question marks, multiple. I found in a shop close to my work, as well as some dinosaur doodles I did at work. Hope they could be good founding creatures for future episodes. Keep making great educational and charming content. Much love, Ariel. Thank you. Oh. We've got some some Cretaceous representation with Dinochirus and a and a battle scarred T Rex and a stripy uh, oh Stellosaurus now. <laughs> I don't know what the first word is, but some plesiosaur. <laughs> some more don non dinosaurs. And some herbivores. Well, to borrow your word, these are charming. Thank you. But this Albertosaurus, it's like... It's, it's that rubbery material, but it's also full of s sand? Like I can... I can squish it around and, like, make it kind of stay there. But I can't affect the parts that bother me the most, like the posture. <laughs> Odd. Oh, I see it now, because it's... I see why you thought it... why you think it's an Albertosaurus. It's because of the shape of the head with the... Sort of dip in front of the horns there. That makes sense. Thank you, Ariel. This is from David in California. Oh, another little tiny one. Oh! Um... Is it... Is it like a dimorphodon? It's it's a pterosaur, clearly. And it's got that, that big boxy head on it. I think it might be a dimorphodon. Oh, a typewritten letter. Dear Stephen and Elizabeth, I'm sure you get this a lot, but I'm a huge fan of the show. You've really helped to reignite my love of paleontology, which had been dormant for a very long time. I appreciate that you directly reference scientific papers. It gives me a way to dive even deeper into topics. Well, thank you. Sending this plastic figure I found while cleaning out my closet, I believe I originally got it out of a Kinder Egg. It seems to be Rampharynchus, Rampharynchus or similar, based on the head and tail. I like how the outside opens up to reveal the skeleton inside. What? Oh, is that why it's two colors? Can I? Oh, that's cool. It's wrong, but it's cool. Like the, the wings don't have any bones in them because how would you do that with such a small toy and have it still hold together? What a bizarre concept for such a tiny thing. Although, looking at the skull, I, I'm increasingly convinced this is supposed to be like a dimorphodon. Mm. Uh, but, uh... I like how the outside opens up to reveal the skeleton inside, which somehow looks worse than the lumpy gray reconstruction. I wanted to ask, by the way, about your thoughts on dinosaurs and other prehistoric creatures in media. I was always told that Jurassic Park helped shift the public perception of dinosaurs from slow and stupid to the animals that had been revealed over the past few decades of the dinosaur renaissance, which were active creatures. 
since the Jurassic World reboot didn't really do so, what kind of media could shift perception again, say adding feathers to the popular image, a new movie, some kind of video game? Thank you again for making this wonderful show. All the best, David. Well, I mean, yeah, he sent this in June, so Pe Prehistoric Planet hadn't come out yet, right? But I, I would say some a, a high-profile Walking with Dinosaurs type show would have been what I had answered, but Prehistoric Planet exists now, so pretty pretty much that. <laughs> um, you're right, though. Like, it's it is somewhat frustrating that the Jurassic Park franchise, which started out, you know, let, let's have these new active dinosaurs, has now kind of, in some ways it's walked backwards even, but uh, we've, got, we've got alternatives now. This one is from Jacob in Illinois. It is some kind of notosaur? Or maybe it's an ankylosaurus? No, it doesn't have a club. Maybe it's another polycanthus? Hello, Mr. Bellatini. I have been a fan of your series since before you got your own channel and a fan of non-avian dinosaurs since I was a toddler. I think that's younger than I became a fan of dinosaurs. Anyway, uh, I've always wanted to send a toy for you to review, but couldn't think of what to send until now. I know you already made an episode on Euoplocephalus, but I think you should do more episodes on Ankylosaurs. Plus, this toy has a very glaring issue with its design that I'm surprised made it past quality control. I hope you enjoy looking at this sorry, acu sorry excuse for an Ankylosaurus. P.S. What are your opinions on the beasts of the Mesozoic figures? This is indeed a very weird way to restore an Ankylosaurus. Oh yeah, it says Ankylosaurus on it. Huh. Yeah, the the rim of spikes around it and the the lack of a club are pretty glaring issues. I th I really think they just took a different Ankylosaur and called it Ankylosaurus or maybe a Notosaur. Um, people have asked about Beasts of the Mesozoic before. I, they're, they're doing good work as far as I can see. I have not gotten my hands on one of them yet. It's to, it's, as our other correspondent mentioned, our, our better episodes tend to be the ones that have inaccurate toys. So reviewing a toy that's striving to be as accurate as possible is, um, perhaps outside our purview. But yeah, they're, they're, they're doing good work. Next, we have... Oh, this was just drop chipped. Oh, but there's a note. I don't think you guys have a Monolophosaurus figure. I hope you will like it. I consider it to be another underrated dinosaur from Michelle. Oh, it's the, uh... The, the franchise we were just talking about, made of Monolophosaurus. It's weird that the, you know, they, they could have, like, extended the crest using keratin or, or whatever else, or even just exaggerated it like they exaggerate everything else, but they... This is a very conservative Monolophosaurus. Oh, huh. And the hands are are not quite pronated. They're like diagonal. Maybe in another thirty years they'll be fully <laughs> um, facing inwards. Oh, that's fancy. Thank you, Michelle. Next, we have a box that was too big to have on the table to start with. This is from Adam in Kansas. Dear Stephen and Liz, you have impeccable pen penmanship, sir. 
Uh, I found your show back in the Geek Group days, and you quickly reignited my interest in dinosaurs and other prehistoric life. As a kid, I used to browse a collection of hobbyist websites that kept up with paleontology news and posted often humorously scathing reviews of popular media featuring those creatures that walked, crawled, scurried, swam, and flew all over this planet so long ago. I didn't speak English at the time, but tantalizing glimpses of the story of life before us came through all the same. My interests eventually shifted, but when your show appeared by chance on my recommended feed, I just couldn't stop watching. Over the last few years, and now with a decent grasp of the English language, I've learned so much more about dinosaurs and a few other creatures from you, and people I found through you and the almighty algorithm than I ever thought we could truly know about creatures that have left us little more than traces and bones. After going through a rather dark time, I even found something of a philosophical grounding in your monologue at the end of the Archaeopteryx episode. Life is a writhing, messy, iterative, beautiful experiment indeed. It constantly upends our simplified narratives of it, something I struggled with for a long time since it, implies, since it applies to our lives today as much as our study of the distant past, but now I appreciate a new beauty in every turn. I'm just happy to be alive now when we can learn so much about it, and people like you with a genuine passion for this study can share it with so many. That's a better reason for living than I've ever found anywhere else. Thank you." That's very sweet. <laughs> um, glad we could help. Um, regarding the contents of this box, I bought these LEGO sets a few years ago. I forgot about them for a long time, but remembered when I saw the LEGO rendition of one of the Jurassic World dinosaurs made an appearance in one of your Q&As. I hope they will make an interesting, if maybe a little fragile, addition to your collection. The larger ideas sets... Ah! Come on. There we go. Huh. The larger ideas set is an actual attempt by Lego designers to recreate these skeletons faithfully as they could as faithfully as they could. Since a re-upload of the old T-Rex skeleton episode is coming down the pipeline at some point, its skeleton in brick might be of particular interest. This is definitely an improvement over the um, Jurassic World one that we had, have. Um, the creator set leans more toward the pop culture side of depictions. Yeah, it definitely does. Uh, but I figured it would be a fun addition since it attempts to be a more intricate construction than the larger mold dinosaurs from the Jurassic World sets. I don't need them back or anything. My own copies are displayed on my shelf next to your wonderful wood puzzle, Velociraptor and Protoceratops. I'm very excited about the upcoming Gigantosaurus episode. It was one of my favorite dinosaurs way back when, since it was bigger than T-Rex and almost no one knew I knew had heard of it. Thank you, and here's to many more episodes, Adam. Spoilers, we're working on a Gigantosaurus episode. <laughs> I don't think we've actually announced that officially anywhere. <laughs> so, for, for those of you who actually tune into the mailbags, now you know. I've ha I have been heads down in Allosauroids, which is probably why I was failing to recognize Manoraptoriforms. Yeah, these are neat. I'm not going to open them, and I'm definitely not going to try to put them together, but... Maybe in the future. Yeah, thank you very much, Adam. We have a couple of letters from Tyler in Pennsylvania. Okay, well, we, we, they're not actually letters, they're just packets of art. <laughs> There's no correspondence. But we've got a... a Hulskaraptor that has swan-like coloration, which I suppose I can't prove that they didn't. 
Let's hope they don't have swan-like temperament. And we have a, a sheet of pale a sheet of Parasaurolophus in various uh, proportions. It might just be the style, but I noticed that the neck is uh, the old-fashioned sort of noodly neck, not the new triangle of beef that we have. We've got what appears to be fan art from Prehistoric Planet. At least that looks like the Tyrannosaur Dad. <laughs> Hi ho, Kermit the Beelzebufo here. Which is a real genus. And a big old fuzzy Dinochirus. People send us Dinochirus. This is the second Dinochirus art this video, but I don't. We've, we've only got the one Dinochirus toy, and it's like that big. I assume somebody makes a Dinochirus toy. But thank you, Tyler. This is from Jericho? Your name is Jericho? Like that's in, um, I think, Maryland? Oh, and he's got a... Some kind of, uh, I want to say... Spinosaurid? Like maybe a Baryonyx on the, uh, on the envelope? Howdy, I'm a huge fan of your show. I've always had a love for dinosaurs, but your show has proven that I'm not weird for liking dinosaurs. Who told you you were weird for liking dinosaurs? They've always amazed me. I wish to become a paleo artist once I get better at drawing and shading. I've included some art of my characters, with Jericho being the one that is a persona of some sort. I'm not good with art, so hopefully you like this. From an aspiring paleo artist, Jericho. We've got a... I don't know what an Arthropleura is, but based on it being next to a uh, Meganeura, it must be some kind of giant bug. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh, these are adorable. I like how expressive they are. <laughs> I think you're doing fine. Oh, it probably was a Spinosaurus on the envelope then, since that's a Spinosaurus here. Yes, thank you, Jericho. This is from someone in Colorado. Oh, there it is. Why is one side heavy? Oh, there's stuff. Come on. Stephen and Elizabeth, I started watching Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong to study for a paleontology class at BYU with Dr. Brooks Britt. Just after I finished my term paper on Herrerasaurus, you guys released your video on it. Well, I would hope that once you're at that level, our video isn't going to be very helpful for you, but um, I'm flattered that you uh, uh, think it could have been. Uh, I'm not much of a figurine person, but I love stickers, so I sent those. There are eight dino LGBTQ pun stickers. Oh, well, I do love a good pun. Uh, one regular dino pun sticker and two depictions of my favorite dinosaur, Utahraptor. We had some skeletons at Atten, our school paleontology museum. If you could give them a quick once-over for accuracy, that would be great. Signed, Ethan. I mean, that's a gorgeous Utahraptor. 
I'm sure there are... Yeah, so th this is maybe more what people are used to seeing for Utahraptor, where it's got the, like, frizzier tail and a naked face. Although, I, I suppose having the entirely naked head and neck is not impossible. It's just I, I tend to prefer the look of the more heavily fluffed one. Though for an animal that large, who can say? Maybe it, maybe it was less fluffy than its relatives. Okay, what, what do we have here? We have a Panosaurus. <laughs> Allosaurus. I like that. You don't usually see Allosaurus with that extensive a fluffy covering, so that's cool. Tyrannosaur Ace. Nice. Stegosaurus. Transceratops. Bilophosaurus. Again, heavily feathered. I like it. Embilociraptor. These are really cute. I, li I like that they're stylized while still keeping, like, recognizable anatomy. <laughs> I feel like I've seen this design before, but uh, yeah, the bodacious period. Quality. Oh, I missed one. Le <laughs> Lesbiosaurus. Nice. Oh, and the little inflatable stuff on the nose forms hearts. That's cute. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Okay, last box is also too big for the table. Here we go. This is from Zachary in Arizona. Oh, geez. Greetings, your dinosaurs are wrong. Firstly, I would like to thank you and the channel for re renewing a dormant interest of mine in paleontological topics. I do not recall which of your videos I first found, but I have been an avid viewer ever since. Anyhow, I am moving to a new town and I no longer have space for a few items that once graced my office. I am sending you a sort of plush-ish velociraptor made by an Etsy artist at Gr Gray Feather Farms, I think, if I'm reading that right. It's been years since I had to read this much cursive. Uh, as well as an Ichthyosaurus, really? Oh, Ichthyornis from the Land Before Time universe. I hope they bring you and all of the viewers of the channel as much joy as they did me. Take care, Zachary. So this is enormous. And it's got actual feathers? Or, or, I guess they're fake feathers, but f physical feathers on the surface of this guy. I see what you mean by plush-ish. Parts of it are plush and parts aren't. This is cute. I'm gonna get the box out of here one second. <laughs> and there's the Ichthyornis. I feel like I should have known that Land Before Time had an Ichthyornis. I did not know they had an Ichthyornis. <laughs> it's... It doesn't seem to be very happy to be here. Uh, but this guy... There was some effort put into this. They've got the tail fan separated from the rest of the body, which I... I mean, fine, sure. They've got different kinds of feathers on different parts of the body. They've got contour feathers on the dorsal part. They've got... Well, that doesn't make any sense to have... You, you would expect the downy stuff to be further from the wing. But they do have primary feathers, though they're attached... They're, they're doing that thing where they attach to the arm instead of to the second finger. Which I suppose makes them secondaries, actually. Oh, we lost a claw. Oh, there it is. Third claw of the hand came off.
The completely unfeathered head is a little outdated, but I like the eyes. They're rather pretty eyes. The shape of the head feels, well, I, I guess it's kind of a cartoonily proportioned animal overall anyway, so I shouldn't criticize that too much. That's, that, that's, that's quite a production. There. You're gonna go on that chair over there. There you go. No, there you go. <laughs> this guy is comparatively simple in construction. I guess this is an actual commercial product, so that makes sense. I don't like, I, there's something about his face that just bugs me. I think it's how tiny the teeth are and how huge the eyes are. But this might be the only Ichthyornis we have, so <laughs> good job on that. Um, thank you very much, Zachary, and thank you everybody who sent us stuff or correspondence or both. Uh, always nice to hear that we're helping people maintain an interest in paleontology. That's that's, that's what we're here for. Um, and thank all of you for watching, and we will see you next time.